The Patriots' sixth Super Bowl ring has just been revealed, and so I thought I'd make a video ranking all 53 Super Bowl rings from worst to best. This is, of course, just my opinion. I tend to like modern Super Bowl rings much more than older rings, but let's get right into the list. The first Super Bowl ring is, in my opinion, the worst one. At the time, the Super Bowl wasn't called the Super Bowl, it was just called the NFL-AFL World Championship game, which is why there's a big globe in the middle of it. This was just how rings were made back in the 60s and earlier, but it's just not as good as rings that would be made later. The Miami Dolphins' second ring was supposed to be a twin of their first ring, but with two diamonds, but in my opinion, it just looks so much worse. The diamond set in gold look washed up, and it's a huge downgrade from their first ring. For some reason, the Packers' second ring had three diamonds. To be fair, the practice of using diamonds to mark how many times your team had won wasn't started until Super Bowl VIII by the Dolphins, but still, it doesn't make a lot of sense. This ring is just ugly. The two football diamonds set on a matte blue football shape are underwhelming. Also, what's up with these numbers on the side? Why are they so elongated? This ring looks like a raven's head on a grill. Pass. I am not a fan of this design of having four football diamonds inside of a larger football. And I really don't like how a lot of rings have these dates in the corners. They just look so ugly. This ring is basically the exact same as the 49ers ring. However, I slightly prefer this version because it doesn't have those ugly dates in the corners. Wow, a Lombardi trophy on a blue background. How creative. At first, I didn't know what was going on with this ring, but it turns out the little things in the middle are the, like, feathers on the back of the Redskins logo. Why they chose to include just that part of the logo, I have no idea. Like, imagine if the Patriots put just the red streamers from their logo on their ring and nothing else. I don't like the overuse of the yellow gold, and there's nothing on this ring that symbolizes that this was a third victory. Somehow, the Cowboys managed to make a star look unappealing. Also, I don't know why, but for some reason the Cowboys and 49ers a lot of times forgot to put the words World Champions on the rings. A choice which I heavily dislike. I like the green on this ring, but this was the first ring to introduce these awful dates in the corners. A trend which lasted way too long and ruined many rings. This ring is pretty generic, but the red is a nice touch. Along with the abnormally large diamond in the middle. The 49ers first ring was based off of the Jets ring, but replacing the green with diamonds. And I do think the diamonds make it look better. The Chiefs only ring has a very three-dimensional football in the middle, and I think it makes the diamond in the middle stand out a lot more. The Steelers first ring makes a lot out of a little, using the golden text to magnify the one diamond in the center. The 17 diamonds surrounding the center of this ring represent the Dolphins' 17-0 undefeated season, which is so far the only perfect season in the history of the NFL. This is definitely the most boastful ring ever made. Keep in mind, this was only the 14th Super Bowl ever played, and the Steelers already had four championships. The next most at the time was two, held by three different teams. Unfortunately for the Steelers, this ring did not stand the test of time too well. The Raiders' second ring has two large diamonds in the middle, which, to me, don't really stand out that much, and are sort of drowned out by all of the other arbitrarily placed diamonds around the ring. I like how the Steelers incorporated the three hypocycloids from their logo for their third ring. This ring was basically only held back by the limited money and technology at the time, as they would go on to reuse this design in their later rings. The blue star to represent the Cowboys logo is nice, but the diamond in the middle is a bit too big. Also, the way they did the text on this ring is pretty unusual. There's really nothing special about this ring, I just like how the three Lombardi trophies look like they're facing you, and how diamond heavy the 49ers went. This ring looks great, the Lombardi trophy in the middle is in my opinion the best one ever put on a ring. The two diamonds are set in palladium, and the text around the face is used beautifully, some of the best text ever on a Super Bowl ring. One thing I like about Raiders rings is how the gold and diamonds used to make them are actually in one of the Raiders colors. The equivalent is if like the Patriots used blue gold to make their rings. The Raiders first ring has a very large diamond football, which stands out against the black background. The Cowboys second ring is an improvement on their first, with two stars on top of each other. They pretty much fixed everything that was wrong with their first ring, especially the lettering. This is, to date, the only ring that has been won by a team from Los Angeles. God damn it, Rams. This was the first ring to feature football-shaped diamonds for the Lombardi trophies. 
Admittedly, they do look kind of stuffy, but I kind of like it. This is also the only 49ers ring to feature all of the following words. San Francisco 49ers World Champions. On every other 49ers ring, they left out at least one of those phrases. This is my favorite ring from the Redskins. The Lombardi trophies on the side are very unique, and the red sapphires give it color. I don't like how they wrote 1987 on the bottom, that sort of makes it look like a high school state championship ring. But other than that, it's the Redskins' best ring. There's really nothing wrong with this ring, other than the overuse of yellow gold. There's just not much you can do with a star to make it stand out. It's still the Cowboys' best ring, though. The Chicago Bears' only ring uses their logo well enough, but I don't like how the one diamond in the middle sort of throws it off. And the lettering on this ring reminds me too much of Deal or No Deal. This ring basically tells the story of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. As an expansion team, the Bucks went 0-14 in their first season. Ouch. And so when they were able to turn the franchise around and win a Super Bowl, their ring captured the unbelievability of it. Never give up, kids. Similar to the Bucks, the Rams were another perennially bad team that somehow managed to win a Super Bowl. I like how they went extra heavy with the diamonds, especially how they encrusted the logo. Yes, this actually was the Rams logo at one point. I don't know why, but I just don't like this particular Patriots ring. I think it's because the diamond background is just a simple grid and looks like some fake Super Bowl ring you could buy off eBay for 12 bucks. But it does have the amazing Patriots logo which they put on all of their rings. The 49ers' fifth ring features five forward-facing Lombardi trophies, and they're well done. While they still do look stubby, it's less noticeable this time. My favorite thing about this ring, however, is that it was the last ring to ever use these ugly corner dates. Seriously, what were they thinking? This ring was far ahead of its time. It was the first ring to use the team's logo, which granted was just a simple horseshoe, but it's brought out by the colored sapphires, which wouldn't be used again on a ring for 17 years until the Redskins use red sapphires. Very nice ring. I like how the Broncos' first ring uses orange gems and the effort they put into the logo. However, making it out of diamonds just looks... weird. It's an overall good ring, though. If you thought one Bronco was a lot, Get ready for double trouble! This ring, along with the Cowboys second ring, are the only rings that feature the team's logo multiple times. And I think the overall look of this ring is an improvement from the Broncos first. The Packers fourth ring is a good example of a modern Super Bowl ring. I like the green centerpiece under the G, but my problem with this ring is how the corner diamonds sort of throw the shape off. I prefer the Packers third ring over their fourth. The lettering on this ring looks a bit warped, but I kind of like it. The Colts' second ring has a blue horseshoe instead of a white one, and is an overall modern upgrade from their first ring, now with a Lombardi trophy. The reason it only has one Lombardi trophy is because this was their first Super Bowl win in Indianapolis, with the other being from when the team was in Baltimore. This ring is to date the only Super Bowl ring to have the words World Champions encrusted in diamonds. And it's not hard to see why. There's so much space on this ring where they could have put more diamonds but just chose not to. Maybe it was because this was their third ring in four years and they were running out of money. But still, it's a Patriots ring and they all look good. This is one of the only circular shaped Super Bowl rings. While I personally don't like how the Lombardi trophies are arranged asymmetrically, it's still a solid ring. I might be biased towards this ring because I believe Super Bowl 42 was the best Super Bowl of all time, but this ring's shape is just perfect. The shape of the Giants logo, the way the trophies are arranged, and also the way the bases of the Lombardi trophies are made, they're just better than every other ring there is. However, the only thing holding it back is that it lacks the color of a modern ring. If this ring had some blue accents or gems thrown in, it would be much higher on this list. But still, it looks great. The Steelers' historic sixth ring has a great set of six diamonds, and the logo looks nice, but the big problem with it is that it's shaped like a lemon. Why does the ring protrude at the tips? Were they trying to make it look more like a football or something? That's sort of a big design flaw that in a way ruins an otherwise fantastic ring. The Saints' only ring is one of the few times I'm glad they went with yellow gold. The fleur-de-lis looks perfect, but I don't think the big diamond in the middle was necessary. I also think they went a bit conservative with the diamonds on the edges, but still, the logo is what makes it look good. 
While Super Bowl 50 was a disappointment, the Broncos' third ring was certainly not. The Broncos finally figured out how to effectively make their logo out of diamonds, and the Super Bowl 50 logo was done perfectly. My only complaint is that the ring is a bit too square shaped, although that is sort of fitting for this team. The Patriots second ring has one of my favorite designs. I like how the ring sort of slopes inwards towards the trophies, and it's got the great Patriots logo as always, although it looks a little squished by the surrounding diamonds. I'm a little concerned, however, about how the top football sort of precariously hangs off the ring. I wouldn't be surprised if one of the players lost that diamond because it broke off. My favorite thing about the Patriots' fifth ring is that it has 283 diamonds, in reference to how the Falcons blew a 28-3 lead. The only thing I don't like is how it awkwardly bulges out in the center. Alright, how many diamonds do you think are on this ring? 200? 300? How about 422? 422 diamonds. On a little thing that fits on your finger. I don't even know how that's possible. Granted, most of those diamonds are tiny, your standard wedding ring diamond would look like this if you put it on this ring, but still, 422 diamonds, that's insane. The design for this ring is basically copied from their previous ring, except the bulge is filled in with more diamonds. You could complain and say that this ring is too busy, but when you win 6 Super Bowls, I think you earn the right to be. The Giants' fourth ring has blue sapphires, giving it the color that their last ring was unfortunately missing. The Giants logo is absolutely perfect, but my biggest complaint is how I don't like how the trophies are pointed inward. It looks a bit unnatural. The Seahawks first ring was relatively modest, but effective. They incorporated both blue sapphires and a green emerald for the Seahawks eye, using both of the team's colors. This is a truly beautiful ring. The Ravens second ring is amazing and a huge improvement over their first. The Ravens logo features a bee made out of gold, which looks perfect, and the two Lombardi trophies are big and tall. The Ravens used Patriots level of diamonds on this ring, with 243 in total. The Steelers fifth ring is in my opinion their best ring. The five Lombardi trophies each have their Super Bowl number on them, the Steelers logo has three different colored gems, and it's an overall fantastic ring. The only reason this isn't number one is because there's one other ring that's just a little bit better. And the number one best Super Bowl ring of all time, the Houston Texans. Nah, I'm just kidding. It's the Super Bowl 52 Philadelphia Eagles. This is everything a championship ring should be. The face of the ring is backed by 17 green sapphires to represent the 2017 season. The Eagles logo has 52 diamonds, representing Super Bowl 52, and combined with the Lombardi Trophy, makes this the best Super Bowl ring of all time. Hey guys, Purple Circle Man here. Thanks for watching my video. Um, tell me what you think about it. Do you agree? Do you disagree? What's your favorite Super Bowl ring? What's your least favorite? Do you think they should be in a different order? Tell me about it in the comments. Um, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Purple Circle Man. I make videos about sports and other things. And yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Uh. <laughs>